Hey guys, it's Megan. Happy Tuesday and I'm popping in just as I do every week um, to give you another tip that I uncovered this past week. So I was talking with an office this past week and what we were um, discussing was assignment of benefits and I flat out asked the office, hey, do you guys accept assignment of benefits? And the office manager had no idea what I was talking about. So I had to kind of re, um, you know, rework my question um, to her and figure out how I can explain assignment of benefits as well as how I can explain to her if it's good or not good to do. So that's what we're gonna go over in today's video, whether you accept assignment of benefits, what the benefits. The first thing um, is what is assignment of benefits? Now this question, the easiest way to uh, answer this is to say, that assignment of benefits is where the insurance company issues the check to. So whether either they issue it to the office or they issue it to the subscriber. And sometimes uh, the office has control over where they say to send the check and other times they don't. So we're seeing a lot more and more cases, especially for out of network providers, that you're not allowed to accept assignment of benefits anymore. And I think the reason for that is because uh, insurance companies want you to be in network with them. So it's just a little advantage to being in network. Uh, so kind of the way it works is if you're in network with an insurance company, then most of the times you're able to accept assignment of benefits. Sometimes you can still tell them to issue it to the subscriber. However, um, if you're out of network, the insurance co insurance company kind of uh, determines where you, if you can accept or not. So it's always great to ve re-verify whether you can accept assignment of benefits or not for insurance claims before you bill them and before you quote them to the patient. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what is the benefit and disadvantage of accepting assignment of benefit? So accepting assignment of benefit means the insurance checks come to the office. Now this is great because it one, lowers the patient's overall out of pocket, many, making them extremely easy to convert, right, in the TC room because now their payments are lower. Um, and two, the patient has, does not have to deal with the insurance company. So both of those things are great. However, the burden falls on the office to really know the ins and outs of insurance. And a lot of times, most insurance coordinators are self-taught. So, um, you know, that, that's kind of the, the advantage of being uh, accepting assignment of benefit. Now, some offices say, yes, we accept assignment of benefit, but we... worry about coordination of benefits they don't have to worry about you know all of that however um, I do want to mention for offices that do do that it can make it extremely tricky in the future when a patient let's say switches insurance companies now you're having to ask the patient for that secondary insurance and get those EOBs which a lot of times they don't have um, in order to submit a work in progress claim to the new insurance. So always, you know, think about how this can affect you in the future before you just say, yes, we accept assignment only on primary. If you accept assignment of benefits on primary and secondary, which is what we recommend, um, that one lowers the overall out of patient pocket expense. Sometimes insurance companies, if they have a really good plan, um, covers, you know, up to $4,000. And that's great because a treatment fee of $6,000, right? You have 4,000 knocked off. I mean, the patient's going to be extremely easy to convert. Um, so that is, you know, why we recommend accepting assignment of benefit on both insurances. Um, plus it really just, you know, adds that next level of customer service to the office by saying, look, we're going to deal with your insurance company. We know the ins and outs of it. And you, you know, feel confident, um, in quoting them, how you're quoting them. Um, now, if your office doesn't accept assignment of benefit, that means the insurance pays the subscriber directly. Now, um, if you're in network, um, a lot of times insurance checks will still come to you, so you'll want to, you know, know that. But for offices that are out of network and they, you know, send the check to the subscriber, that's totally fine. Um, now, what I want you to think about before you go this route is, one, the patient is going to be a little bit harder to convert in the TC room because their out of pocket is so much more expensive, right? You're not putting that estimated insurance um, payment to the office. So they're having to cover the full out of pocket expense, even though you're telling them that they're going to be, 
receiving 2000 from their insurance companies, a lot of times it just doesn't click until they start receiving those checks. Um, the next thing is if a patient ever switches insurance midway through treatment, it can be extremely difficult to help them um, submit a work in progress claim to that new insurance company because they're gonna ask for all of the EOBs and a lot of times if you don't accept assignment of benefits, all those EOBs are only going to the subscriber. So this can be extremely frustrating when they do switch insurance or if they ever have an issue with the insurance. The office can't um, help the patient, you know, fully because they don't have all of the supporting documents that they would had they accepted assignment of benefits. So just a few things that I wanted to go over in today's uh, Tuesday tip of the week um, because assignment of benefits is extremely important and I want to be sure that your office is set up as successful um, as possible. Whether you